I've got a little toggle press that I use that looks exactly like the one you see here in this picture. So this is a Schmidt toggle press and it's real good for manually inserting things like bearings or rivets or something like that into a part. So what I'm doing with this is I'm machining an aluminum housing and then I'm pressing in a couple bearings. And doing that is fine for a couple, but after you do a couple thousands of them, it gets pretty tedious and it sort of wears me down in terms of my shoulder over time, the repetitive motion, that kind of thing. So anyway, I came up with that idea that I would make a pneumatic version of the press. And I looked at the cost of the Schmidt presses and they're pretty darn expensive. So I checked the AliExpress website to see what they were doing and what they were offering. And you can see they build these little ones and they have a double rod on the cylinder so you can adjust the stroke, but they look pretty small to me. And as they got larger and larger, they would get quite a bit more expensive. So I kind of thought, well, maybe I could just build my own. So I sort of put something together with a two-stage cylinder. That's what this sort of dumb rectangular block is on top. And I sort of adapted the design to work with something I could do with parts that I mostly had on hand. So you can see this has some M16 rods with nuts on either side of a plate on top, as well as nuts on either side of a plate on bottom. So on bottom, they're counterboard. But this is the basic build and it's pretty simple. The most expensive part here for me, since I already have these plates and I already have, this is just a 3D printed part, and I already have a lot of the pneumatics that I'm gonna to use to connect the cylinder, all I really need to buy is this main double stage cylinder that's a 100 millimeter bore, and that's about $120. So this rod I do need to buy as well as the bolts. But you can see the ram is a simple bolt. It's an M18 with a couple jam nuts that are holding it in place but it's a relatively simple design. So let's take a look at the parts when they actually showed up. So these are the parts I'm gonna start with to try to build this press. This is some eight millimeter tube. Here's some air fittings that are gonna be used for the spring return valve. And it's a five way two position valve. Here's a base plate that I machined out of some aluminum stock that I had and I just counterboard big holes so I can put uh, real large nuts in there and try to bolt down with washers. these pillars. So these are essentially going to sit like this and then this second plate will sit on top of the whole thing and the whole thing is just going to be bolted together so it's going to be pretty easily adjustable. So on top of this piece I'm going to bolt this two-stage cylinder and that should give me something like a ton of force. So this is a 100 millimeter bore cylinder and I think this is a 32 millimeter rod and it's got 25 millimeters of stroke total. And this is a little bit strange because this came with these nuts attached to some threaded rod, which was not this threaded rod. It was shorter than this, but I got this longer stuff because I didn't find an easy way to bolt this. I sort of misunderstood it when I bought it because it said it was an M14. And this is actually a 12. So what they did is they just kind of dropped these in here and they used the threaded rod um, through the center to tie these two cylinders together. And that didn't leave me anything to bolt this whole thing down to. And I kind of understood it to be an M14, so you can see I counterboard the thing and I actually put it back into the mill after the fact and counterboard it much larger. So now it's going to work to take one of these bolts with a washer, I'm not sorry, and I'm just gonna do this and bolt it straight down to the cylinder. So I'm gonna extend these threaded rods all the way through the cylinder and then they'll protrude a little bit and that's how I'll bolt this plate on. So we'll see if that works and we'll see if it all holds together and we'll see what I think I need as I go forward. All right, so I've got my threaded rod, my M12 threaded rod protruding from the cylinder, and it, these two cylinders are tied together, and now we have to mount the cylinder to the upper mounting plate. So the cylinder is now mounted. You can see I just screwed it down with big uh, nuts per M12 rod, and I used a 19 millimeter socket that would fit right in these holes that were counterboard. So now we'll take this mess of hardware, and we'll use these M14 rods to tie the top plate to the bottom plate. So this is our bottom, this is our top, and these nuts are gonna fit the same way as we did mount the cylinder to the upper plate. And I'll just go right in here and with room for a socket. So now the basic press is together. You can see the top plate is bolted to the cylinder, the bottom plate is bolted to the connecting rods, and I also put the valve together. These are quarter inch NPT fittings with eight millimeter connections on the input port and the two output ports, and I put two mufflers on the exhaust ports. So now we connect some tubing. So here's the finished press. I've got it connected to air. I used these 3 8 inch Festo air fittings, and they actually do have flow controls on them. So these are meter outflow controls, so I had to adjust this one because I wanted the ram to drop a little more slowly. 
and I've got two piped to the top and one to the bottom and this is just an exhaust. So you can see I 3D printed a little fixture that I kind of realized I wanted after the fact. So I put this base plate back in the mill. I drilled a couple more holes and this will actually work for three different versions of the same product. So it's adjusted and here's a scrap part that is essentially what's going to go in here. So I'm probably going to use this from the back, but just for demonstration so we can see how this actually works, I'm going to load it in right here and we'll see if we can drop this down a little bit so I can actually see it function. So there it is. So this is meant to just slide back and forth to hit either one of these holes to press a bearing in. So we can do the small one first. So that should be essentially centered underneath the ram. So all I'm going to do is push this lever and it should go right in. That was pretty easy. Let's do the other one. So as an aside, there's no safety at all built into this. I could do something like put a, another switch in that forces my left hand to also be out of the way of the press and holding onto a button, or I could maybe put some guarding on this or maybe use some kind of piloted, val piloted valve or something along those lines. And I very specifically chose to use the hand lever instead of the foot pedal because I didn't want to accidentally step on this and you know trigger the ram when I wasn't expecting it. And that's also another one of the reasons I wanted to use flow controls on the cylinder so I could control the speed of the ram. I didn't want it to move as fast as it can because I don't need it to move as fast as it can. Works great. And if you can see in the background here, this is the press I used to use. This is a Schmidt toggle press. It's actually a pretty expensive press and it's a lot better than an Arbor press that you buy at, you know, Harbor Freight or something. It's got a fixed stroke and it forces you to go all the way down and it's worked great but you know after 3,000 or so of these bearings pressed in or I think more like 5,000 my shoulder can't really take it anymore so that's the reason I built this thing. If you have any questions or comments about this project feel free to leave them below and as always thanks for watching.